along the road skirting the edge of the vast moor and leading toward Maple and Air. It was a fine day, the sun was out, the wind had calmed, and Glenn reveled in the sights she was seeing. Keith took the coast road southward and Glenna found her eyes caught and held by the many ruins she could see. When she expressed interest in them, Keith chuckled. You see that one over there? There's a story that 400 years ago, the Earl of Casillas roasted a man over a fire until he signed away all his rights to land which the Earl wanted. He chuckled as Glenna gasped. I. It has its dark and seamy side, as Scotland. Murders and tortures and clan feuds. It isn't pretty for your ears. But it exists. He sobered, adding, the strain runs deep in our blood today. If Marion Lamont had her way, she'd delight in roasting us both over slow fires. He. How can you say that? She's not very friendly, true. But to think she'd relish that why, it's horrible. Is it? Marion conceives herself to be better than us ordinary folk. The laws that we ordinary folk obey as a matter of course are not for her. Oh, yes. I can picture Marion 400 years ago attacking the castle, capturing us both, and subjecting us to fiendish tortures. Very easily. She stared at him, dumbfounded. If you really believe that and I'm putting me on, how could you ever agree to marry her? It seemed the easiest thing to do until you came along. She considered him, had tilted. If what he said was true, then obviously he must love her very much. Glenna felt warm, delighted. She said slowly, inching closer to him, I'm glad I came along, then. I am, myself. But just because we're going to get married doesn't mean we can let our guard down. Let our guard down. We'll have to be very careful of Marion Lamont who thwarted her, and she isn't going to forget. Glenna stirred uneasily. Are you trying to tell me that she may well want to do something to injure us both? He replied grimly, I, I am. That's why I want to be with you all the time, until we get married and afterward. Any danger that threatens you also threatens me. Some of the delight in the day and their driving went out of Glenna. She told herself that surely the Mackenzie must be exaggerating. In this day and age, nobody would carry vengeance to such extremes. Would Marion? Sober and thoughtful, she huddled closer to Keith. They had lunch at a little inn at Newton Stewart, and over honey ale and sandwiches with hot tea, some of the anxiety that had been in Glenna slid away. She could not believe that Marion Lamont would be anything but annoyed at what had happened. Well, more than annoyed. She had seen that much of the smugglers' haven when Marion had leaped at her. Still, a little reflection would tell Marion that it was silly of her to act that way any longer. What was done, was done. Nothing she could do would change it. At least, let her hope not. Chapter 10 She was married. Glenna fought back tears of happiness as she heard the Reverend Howard Monfife say, and now you may kiss the bride. Keith caught her in his arms, held her close, kissed her softly but hungrily. Afterward, the wedding party moved to the smuggler's haven. Pleased, Glenna surveyed the scene. For an instant, she thought she could see a man in the partially open doorway of Barbara's little office, peering out at her.